Hey, this is Doug, the developer of Caddy App, and this is going to be a hopefully quick video on how you can map courses, golf courses using OpenStreetMap. Uh, OpenStreetMap is available at OpenStreetMap.org, uh, and it's a community mapping site similar to how Wikipedia is a commu community site for you know, encyclopedic information, uh, and both of them let anyone go in and actually edit the information that's available there uh, and, and create new you know, either articles in Wikipedia's case or items on a map in OpenStreetMap's uh, case so that you have a you know, fully developed map uh, based on community input. So OpenStreetMap has all kinds of geographic data, roads, you know, state boundaries, house locations, very similar to the you know, big mapping websites or, and apps that you might use out there. Uh, and it also includes golf course data, which is uh, what Caddy app uses in order to show the, the course layout and get distances, et cetera. So if you are looking to map a course that's not already available on there, you can do so by signing up for an account at openstreetmaps.org. Uh, you can just uh, click this uh, sign up button in the upper right hand corner it asks you for some basic information and you should be good to go. So I've already done that. I'm gonna switch windows to another uh, window where I'm already logged in with my OpenStreetMap account. Uh, I had or found this course called Sunset Ridge Golf Club in uh, upstate New York that wasn't already mapped. Uh, and so that's what I'm gonna use as an example here. Uh, you can see that they have the course layout uh, on their website and also have their scorecard. Lots of courses have this, but if not, you can either you know ask the course for their scorecard directly, or as far as the layout goes, you might have played the course enough that you're familiar with it and can you know determine which hole is which. If not, and if it's a course that you play regularly, there are also some uh apps that let you collect what they call gps tracks and if you actually go out and play the course and you record your track it'll basically show you the uh, kind of path that you took as you played that course and i've done that a couple times in order to figure out you know what the holes are if i'm uh, whole layout is uh based on the kind of the path that i took if if that's something that's not available elsewhere but usually either through their website or on the scorecard you're able to find that information and uh, that's really the, the easiest way. One other thing to note here is I'm going to pull up, um, I'll actually switch back to the regular map view for a moment here just to show how I, I found this course to start with. But basically what I did was uh, it, it has on their website down at the bottom here their address. I just copied that. I pasted that into OpenStreetMap. Okay. In this box up here, it comes up with the resort results, uh, and you can see this 28 West Seneca Turnpike is where it's located. I click that, uh, and it actually brought me to this location. Often, I would say almost always, there is a boundary already mapped for the golf courses, and that's basically a boundary that goes around the whole thing. So you can see this this light gray box here. That's the boundary, and you see this little golf uh, golfer icon on it that indicates it's the boundary. Uh, again, it, most of those are already in place and for courses in uh, in uh, OpenStreetMap, but if not, you can basically just go in, and it, the requirement there is just to draw a boundary uh, around the entire golf course and label it as a golf course, and we'll get to in a minute once we get to the mapping what labeling it actually looks like. So anyway, that's how I, I locate the course on the map. And then if you're, once you're logged in, you can go into edit mode uh, and you can see the actual satellite image of the, the golf course, as well as the uh, boundary that's already been drawn around it at this point. So what I originally came over here to point out was that if I look at the course map here, you can see that the orientation of the course map on in the actual drawn map is different than what I see here. Here you can see it's kind of like vertically oriented and in here it's more like horizontally oriented. And you can also see that the clubhouse is kind of on the left-hand side here. And if I look at the map, I can see that the clubhouse is up on the top. So 
one, what I'll usually do in order to uh, make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on is either if you have a scorecard, it's very easily to, easy to just, you know, turn it the other way to match what you see uh, on the actual like satellite image. But if, if you're working off a, uh, an image from a website, you can use something like Photoshop or any really kind of any uh, image editor to go in and actually rotate it. So that's what I did here. I just took that image that I had uh, gotten off the website and just rotated it, rotated it to the right so that I can very easily see this is hole one, this is hole two, this is hole three you know, as I'm working on it. But you just kind of have to be, if you don't rotate it like that, you have to be doing those calculations in your head constantly. And I found it's a little bit difficult to do. So worst case, even if you don't have an image editor, you could just print out what you see online and rotate it around. I think it's just uh, the point is it's just easier to work on if whatever you see on the course layout image maps what's actually uh, shown on the satellite image. Okay, so I am ready to go now. Um, let me go back to edit mode again, and I'm going to start editing this course. I need to zoom in to edit. And if I go back to my image, I can see that hole number one is uh, comes down off of the clubhouse. It's really kind of the rightmost hole up at the top here. So I'm going to go in and edit it. I can see that that's actually right here. Here's the fairways for that. Here's the green. There's a sand trap for it there. Um, and I'm going to start by just showing how you trace the fairways. So. Uh, what you can do is you click this area icon. The area is just to represent a full area like a, a um, fairway. And the line is used for actually measuring the, or not measuring, showing the path of a hole where it's not connected, not a connected shape. It's just a line. So for things like tee boxes, uh, fairways, greens, you use this area tool. So I'm going to click on that to start with. You see the little crosshair appears on the screen that lets me start drawing on top of that. And so basically what you do is just go around the area and make points to uh, basically draw that shape. If there's curvature to it, probably about you know the spacing that I'm using for the points here is good. But if you get to a flat area like this, it's also okay to go go longer between the points uh, and it will still come out just fine. So I'm gonna do that. And then once I get all the way around this shape, I just click the starting point again and it closes it. You see it draws that red line around it. And now uh, what you can do is you can actually label what that type is. So you see some options that I've used previously came up here, but you can also just start typing in the box. So if I want to say that's a fairway, this will uh, narrow it down to the options, including fairway. I can tap that. And now that uh, box is drawn on it as a fairway. Now you see the fairway kind of continues on here uh, and then goes around and surrounds the green. So, uh, and I should mention, I'm clicking plus the plus and minus keys to zoom in and out like that. You can also do the same using these plus and minus keys uh, over on the right hand side here. So let's go ahead and draw this piece of the fairway. Again, I, I clicked three, uh, which is a, a shortcut that I just kind of did by habit there to uh, enter in the, that area tool that I showed before. But I'm just going to go and draw around this entire fairway piece again. It's also all, sometimes helpful to just move off to the side so you can, if it's a little bit difficult to follow the contour, you can move your uh, cursor off to the side to kind of see what's there or what's underneath this shaded area. So I'm going to go finish this shape just like I did the last one by closing on the starting point. Um, a couple other things to note here. One is if you something's like a little bit off, you see like, you know, you can just click on the points and move them once you're done. Um, again, I can go and, and tap fairway in order to label that shape. Um, and that pretty much 
covers that. So the next thing I want to do is draw the putting grain. So that's going to be inside of the fairway that I just did. I'm going to click the area again, or you can hit three like I just did in order to uh, switch to that with a keyboard. And I'm just going to go draw a shape inside of my outer shape there to represent the putting green. You can kind of see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video, but you can kind of see the color difference underneath there in order to identify where the line goes. And again, if you just need to move it off to the side a little bit, it gets that shading off the top of it so you can get a clear picture of what's going on there. All right, that's done. Um, Again, putting green is being suggested for me since I've used it in the past, but you can just type P-U-T-T uh, and it will filter it down to putting green as the available type. I tap that, it turns it into that lighter green color. And one other thing that you should do here for just cleanliness in general is make this into what's called a multi-polygon polygon, since there's uh, basically a, a shape. Uh, inside of another shape, uh, you're in OpenStreetMap, uh, you know, basics supposed to create a multi polygon for those things. So what you can do is click the two shapes. So click the putting green and then shit, hold down shift and then click on the outer fairway and it will select both of those shapes together. And then you hit the C uh, on the keyboard and it will turn them into a multi polygon. It basically just like groups them together into one thing. So if you see now that I go and click on, you know, either or this one, it will select both of them together. So it's just a, you know, kind of cleanliness thing for OpenStreetMap to group those shapes that go together, um, together like that. So uh, one other thing to call out here is we have the sand trap, so I can trace that in a similar way. Um, again, go and click area. You can type sand T and it will come up with sand trap that I can select. And now that uh, feature is labeled as a sand trap. You also see that I have some water running through this as well. Uh, starts here and kind of crosses over the, uh, through the middle of that fairway, ends up over here. Uh, something like that you can trace in here as well. And I'm going to again use the area to do that and go around this entire shape. Okay, so I've outlined that shape, uh, and now I want to call this a water hazard. So if you type water and uh, space H, uh, it will come up with the golf water hazard there. I'm going to tap that, and it will make it into a water hazard. I'll also link uh, to a page that has all the definitions for these things, so you can see what these names are, so you know if you're trying to tag features, uh, how exactly, what, what names to use for that. All right, so we're almost done with this whole uh, only thing really remaining is the tea boxes. See, it looks like we have one, two, three, four tea boxes for this. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and outline them. One other thing to mention here really quick is um, you can see that I completed that shape, but you know, I could have this a little bit more curved there. You see these little triangles that appear in between points. Uh, if they show up, you can drag on that triangle and it will create another point, you know, at that point. So if I wanted it up there, that's fine. Or if I just wanted in the middle, that's fine. Basically, you can just drag from one of those triangles and a new point will be created wherever you end uh, that drag. So. Let's name this one T-Box.
Okay, so last thing to do on this hole uh, is to draw the actual hole path in the uh, OpenStreetMap documentation. They, they tell you to draw a path along the most common uh, path that a golfer would take down that hole with the ball. Uh, a common thing that I see is the kind of making these paths from the furthest tee box back uh, up to the green. So what you'll do is you'll start with at the tee box and make a line, usually with the amount of uh, points in the middle as would be required for shots to, in order to meet par on that hole. Uh, and I'll explain exactly what that means or a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, but basically, you'll draw a line with, you know, a, an inner a point for each shot that you would actually take. So if we go back and look at this, this is hole number one. It's a par four. Um, so we would start from the tee box. And sometimes you have to zoom in in order to do that. So I'm going to start from the furthest back tee box. Well, I'm going to use the line tool in the middle here since I'm making a line. I'm going to zoom out and I can click and drag to move the map here. And so, like I was saying, I'm going to have my T shot is going to come, let's say out here in a ideal scenario. Uh, and then I'm going to have a second shot uh, to the green in order to reach the green in regulation. So uh, that it, we basically only have the first shot uh, from the T box and the second shot in this case, if it was a par five, you'd have two intermediary, intermediary points. If it was a par three, you would only have one, you know, the shot from the tee box to the green. So that's pretty much how it works. You know, one, one middle point for par fours, two middle points for par fives, and zero middle points, just a straight line for par threes. Um, okay, so that hole is drawn now. Uh, that path is drawn. And now I need to tag that similar to how I tag the other features. You can golf hole you see is suggested here, but if it wasn't for you, you can just type golf hole uh, and then it will give you some options for that. So uh, this here, first is hole number. We know this is hole number one. We know from just looking at the scorecard that it's a par four. Uh, and if I look at the scorecard again, I can see that the handicap is seven. So I can put that in there as well. Uh, and now that hole is complete. So you could just move on to the next hole from that point. The other thing to call out here is that once you're either between holes or really whatever, uh, you know, points that you choose to actually save your work and upload it to OpenStreetMap, you can use this button up here with the arrow on it. It shows that I've made 11 changes as far as like the number of objects that I've created there. Uh, but anyway, clicking that button will come up with this uh, this little comment entry area and uh, a button to upload. So you can add, you know, just a comment basically explaining what you did in a particular case. Um, so I'm going to say uh, added hole number one, and I can click upload, and it will save my changes. So. Uh, you won't necessarily see this show up immediately. If I go back to the map view, you see it's not there yet. Um, that's basically because it takes anywhere from like a day to a couple days for the these actual tiles that are used for these images to update. But within the next couple of days, you'll actually see uh, your course uh, outline show up on the actual map here of whatever holes that you've completed. Uh, so that's basically how you map holes if you went through and uh, if this course wasn't appearing in Caddy app and you went through and, uh, and added all 18 holes, uh, you would actually see it start to show up in there and be able to, it would appear as all the other courses do within the app. Those updates for Caddy app happen uh, every 10 minutes. So, you know, after you've added something, check in about, you know, 50 after you've added a full course, if you check within about 15 minutes, you should see it showing up. If you don't see it showing up, some of the common problems are um, at first that you just, just go through and double check and make sure that all your whole lines have pars on them. They need to at least have pars to show up. Another problem, another thing that they need to have is they need to have the, the, the whole line needs to be ending within a putting green. Um, if that's not, the case, it won't be counted as a whole and it won't show up. 
Uh, and also the, the, in order to show up in caddy app, the courses need to have either nine holes or 18 holes. So if they, if you, like in this case, I just uploaded this, it's only got one hole right now. It wouldn't show up until I had, uh, it completed nine of them. And then if I did a couple more, it wouldn't show up until I had 18. It really needs to have kind of a normal, regular golf course in order to be able to, to show up in the search results. So those are the things to check for. Uh, a, that this, that each one of these is a putting green, uh, and that the actual hole lines o- overlap it and that the pars are there. If that's, if that's not happening or that is the case and you still don't see them showing up, uh, feel free to reach out and I can take a look and see uh, what's going on with that. Uh, also, this is something that, you know, I, it, it can be fun to do this, especially for your local courses. But if you're not able to do it or finding it very difficult or don't have the time to do it, it's something that, that we can do for you as well. We want to add in as, as many courses as that are that we can so that, you know, basically all the courses that are available everywhere uh, eventually show up in here and, and uh, people are able to not only use that for this app, but for all the other purposes that OpenStreetMap uh, data is used for as well. Another very important piece that I forgot to mention in the original video was that you also need to update the course info, which is defined on the uh, course boundary itself. So you see that uh, course boundary is this big green box around the whole thing. I can go into edit mode. I can click on that. It highlights that entire shape. You see the feature type is golf course. And then in here, I can put in the course name. So in this case, it was Sunset Ridge Golf Club. And you can also put in the uh, you know address and you can down here add in uh, telephone for their telephone number uh, and also a website for their website. So all that information is great, but especially the at least the course name and the city and state so that uh, at least for caddy app purposes so that you're able to easily locate that course uh, if you're either searching by name or courses that are nearby you. So that's the basics. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to try to answer those. Thanks very much for watching.